I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. stole. It was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, it, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. Mm. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, Trump's number three guy, I guess, Secretary of State. Marcus Conti reporting, a little trouble today about the, still spinning in my mind. We're only 11 days away from the discovery, the revelation of the Robin Mueller report, the witch hunt into the President of the United States who was allegedly colluding with the Russian government to overturn the Democratic Party, the Democratic National Election. Uh, we're only 11 days out, right? And it seems that everybody has concluded that Trump, no collusion, no obstruction, right? Mr. Trump talking about himself, his part in it. I didn't collude. I didn't corrupt. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Right? Nobody's talking about the real, the real issue. And what is that? What is that real issue? I've been copies with telling you shit for fucking, oh, fucking two years now. I've been telling you that there was no hack. Uh, that it was a dump, that it was a leak. I know people say, oh, fucking Q said that two years ago. Q fucking said this shit two years ago, God. Do you fucking listen? Fucking Q was telling you to fucking get your head up your ass. You don't fucking listen. <laughs> uh, listen, man. Corsi and fucking Roger Stone, fucking Roger Stone gave t t the fucking shit to, to WikiLeaks. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, so, again, Russia Gate started. Russiagate was born. It's now official. Russiagate was born in the bowels of the DNC. It was a, it was a, it was a scheme created by, by Hillary Clinton's campaign. Probably, you know, John Podesta leading the charge. Robbie Mook, the mouthpiece, mouthpiece for Hillary Clinton. And it was, it was a, they got caught cheating. Their own words were being used against them. March, April, May, someone... Someone snatched the emails, and slowly there was little little dribs and drabs of what they had, what they were saying to to each other. And three days before the the Democratic National Convention, pow! Fucking bomb! A bomb lands on on them. Debbie Wasserman Schultz fired. Right, all the corruption. They found out that Donna Brazil was passing questions to Hillary Clinton, working inside of CNN. Big collusion between the media. And the media and the DNC, unheard of in American politics. What a what a what a what a revelation, right? And then and then months later, months later, December, the end after Trump had won the election, Russia did it. It was Russia. So it's still fascinating to me. And I guess the most, uh, you know, the fascinating part of it is the. The lying, the cheating, and stealing. But this this guy did a great job. We'll talk about. You got to talk about Rachel Maddow. You got to talk about the story. I'm still not done. I'm still mainstream media is still spinning and spinning and spinning. So Rachel Maddow sends out a tweet. Right, this guy did a great job. His name is Aaron Matt. He's the R RT guy. Right, you see him on. Um, I think he's on RT. He's also a Gray Zone. Right, he's he's part of the Gray Zone with. Uh, What's that guy's name? Uh, Max Max Ro Blumenthal, right? So these guys do, do good work, right? They do good, honest work most of the time, as far as I could see, right? So Rachel Maddow sends out a tweet. Death of algorithm. Quote, YouTube recommended Russia Today for understanding Mueller report. Right? So Russia Today is RT that we all have come to know and love, have done great work in terms of uh, covering the yellow vests and such. Uh, they do great work. Russia, Russia Today, RT is a uh, home of Lee Camp. <clears throat> but it has Russia in the title, so <laughs> it must be bad, right? Uh, it's not like Al Jazeera. You don't hear them complaining about Al Jazeera in, in the Middle East, right? So Aaron Matt did a, a scathing, seething, seething review of all of Rachel Maddow's comments, right? And uh, I mean, this is a thing that Mueller's team does in its sleep. It is hard to believe that they'd leave the newly appointed 68-year-old Attorney General William Barr to himself personally pick through the report to try to figure out what mentions in this 400-page report might pertain to open cases. 
They wouldn't leave that to Barr to do that. Mueller would have done that. So here she is. They're still spinning. The point is that Rachel Maddow is still spinning the Russian narrative, right? Because she had all the answers, right? And it turns out not only, not only was there no collusion between Russia and Trump and no obstruction of justice to a crime that didn't even happen, uh, there's no hack. Uh, that's the thing. Whoever, whoever calls it first, right? Whoever, if Trump is getting close, right? Let's look at let's look what Trump said first. This is I forgot, I almost forgot to talk about this. <laughs> Trump tweets out the other day, right, on the twenty seventh, today's the twenty ninth, two days ago. The Democratic National Committee, sometimes referred to as the DNC, is again working its magic in its quest to destroy crazy Bernie Sanders. For the more traditional but not very bright sleepy Joe Biden. Here we go again, Bernie, but this time please show a little more anger and dignity and indignity when they screw you. Oh, Trump coming out, coming full frontal assault on the two possible people that can upseat him. One is the money, Joe Biden, don't kid yourself, you know, he's the, he's Hillary Clinton with a dick, right? All the money, you know, all the all the correct record and all the super PACs are 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 coalescing around Joe Biden. How did Joe Biden raise six six point eight million dollars or six point two million dollars in the first day? It's all bullshit. It's all large donors. So that's a fudge number. Bernie Sanders raised that about the same, but there was twenty four thousand uh, two hundred and forty thousand small donors that chipped in a couple of dollars each. So Bernie's clearly the front runner, but the DNC has 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 nominated <laughs> Bernie uh, Joe Biden, fucking hands on Joe Biden. I put this meme together. I could take these hands and put them anywhere I want, on anybody I want, even little kids, and nobody can say a damn thing about it. <laughs> That's Joe Biden, fucking creepy motherfucker. Right? It's creepy, creepy Joe, but. So, so what am I trying to say in this? I'm, I'm rambling, you know. What, but the thing about it is that that whoever calls out the real, the real shit that in the Mueller report, right, that there was no hack, that the creation of 14, 14 Russian agents that that evolved and were indicted military operatives. First of all, if the military, if the Russian military did what the what these kooky Democrats are saying they did. Right, hack. Well, not only the, they're not kooky Democrats saying it. The whole the whole political establishment agrees that the that the DNC was hacked by Russians. Right. That's an act of war. Right. For for a foreign government to come in and 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 uh, debunk an election, hack into computer servers, and there's no no consequence whatsoever, is an act of war because they're saying that. The GRU, right? That's what Mueller report says. That the GRU, the Russian military operatives, hacked into the DNC. Right? Act of war, no consequence. Right? It's 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 just the story is so unbelievable. But here's Rachel Maddow. I want to go back to this July July third, two thousand seventeen. You could go through, um, you could go through Aaron Matt's you know, saving, it's on his, uh, it's on Zero Hedge if you want to look at it. And he points out one situation after another where Rachel Maddow is, uh, was, a, was a, a cheerleader for the Russia did it narrative, right? And now she's still, again, still running with the idea that, that uh, Russia could have done it. No, they could have done it. But uh, so let's, let's listen to, let's listen to Rachel Maddow just for a second. There were hints in the months before the November election that something was off, that something was going on in this one um, that was different. It, it all seemed, though, almost too big to grasp at the time, in the middle of what was already this incredibly interesting campaign, this incredibly politically vile, uh, volatile campaign. But in the middle of, of all that, there was also this external foreign dynamic at work beginning with the news last summer that the email servers of the Democratic Party headquarters had been hacked by Russian hackers. Right, so the dates, just follow the dates, right? This is June 19, hacking, right? So 
again, the leaker, uh, alleged leaker, right? Uh, Seth Rich dies July 10, right? And the the hat, the dump, right? <clears throat> there was there were drips and drabs of emails leaking out already, right? Wiki, remember? Guccifer 2.0 is publishing stuff and DC leaks, right? Remember that the, 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 that was the inside operatives. But again, <clears throat> Russiagate was born, was created right around March of 2016. The timeline is very, very important. Right around March, April, May, that's when whoever it was grabbed the DNC emails and had them. I got them. Ah. I got the thumb drive. Let's go, right? They had that shit, right? They had that. It's okay. They put it in their pocket, right? All right. So the, the emails were, were, the material was already gotten, and some pieces of it got out, right? And then the, the theory is that Assange sat on that material, right? Which is, again, so WikiLeaks doesn't sit on anything. They're just trying to confirm that it's real. And they waited three days before the, Na- the Democratic National uh, convention to dump the mother load, to dump the mother load that would sink the DNC. And then after that, leading up to the presidential election, they started to dump Podesta's emails. <clears throat> now, whether that was acquired or qu- acquired after the fact isn't really, it's not really important. It's that WikiLeaks was the source of the, was the publisher of the information. Right? So just bear with me. And there was the news that voter registration systems in at least two states or maybe 10 states or maybe 20 states um, had been probed or breached to to some level by, again, hackers. So, again, leading up to the, the, the primaries, right, throughout the primary season, the smart people in the media were telling, telling, screaming from the rooftops all along that the machines were rigged. People like uh, Sane Progressive, people like like uh, <clears throat> Lee Camp, Jimmy Dora. We were calling out the corruption the whole time, the rigging of the machines, the exit polls not matching, right? exit polls being off by 13%. And when they got caught, they canceled the exit polls. Polling stations were closed. Per- ver- voters purged off the rolls right here in Brooklyn, New York. 200,000 voters were purged off the rolls, potential Bernie Sanders supporters, voters, right? And in open caucuses where people could see the vote, right, all across the country, Bernie Sanders wins by 80%. In the closed box elections, Hillary Clinton wins by 10%. You know, it was just, it was, it was just a, an outrageous, um, an outrageously obvious ripping off of, uh, of an election, right? So that's what I mean. That's what that's what was being revealed leading up to this. So, and you see you see the headlines that came after we had told them what was going on, right? Screaming it, you could see that the the headlines are more state election databases hacked, because they were hacked, but they weren't hacked by a foreign entity. They were being hacked by the people that own the machines, that control the machines, the democratic apparatus, right? The democratic party was doing it. More than 20 states have faced major election hacking attempts, right? Of course. Yeah. Well, Well, we agree with that, but who did it? Can you show us the evidence, please? Can you kindly put the evidence on the table? They never did. By October, the month before the election, the United States intelligence agencies had come out and said that while they couldn't agree on whether it was definitely the Russians behind those voter registration system hacks, they said they were confident that the Russians, the Russian government, had definitely directed the hacking of the DNC and other American political organizations in order to, quote, interfere with the U.S. election process. And none of that was ever confirmed, right, even in, in Mueller's report. It, all we see, page 48, we see the jargon that all from pages uh, 36 all the way to 48, we see this business of 14 Russian hackers. 14 Russian hackers leaving their footprints all over the DNC, right? And they were here and they were there and they were everywhere, stealing and, 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 and working their magic inside of the DNC. Uh, but we never saw any of that evidence. The FBI never... 
never investigated that that uh, they never investigated the the servers right all the information came from a second uh, a a second party or a third party CrowdStrike. that's what we think right because if the dns if muller was revealing that information in his muller report that would have been classified information if it was coming from the source right and the only people that could have have access that would have been the NSA. And as Bill Benny told us that that um, that that he told us that that information would have been classified. And Bill Benny also told us that the footprints clearly indicate a thumb drive drop, that the information was transferred through a computer drop. Statistically it's a trillion to one shot that it happened any other way, according to the NSA guy that we're leaning on, that we believe. But nonetheless, right, that the again, Russiagate evolves. Russiagate evolved after the fact, right? After the fact, after after the Bernie Sanders people walked out, right? And then in the in the convention, and then leading up to Hillary Clinton's disaster against uh, Trump in November two thousand sixteen. So the the bizarre story out of all the weird stuff that has ever happened in american elections this story our story our generation story of the bizarre russian hacking of our election that story was at least starting to emerge in the weeks before the election but at the same time you know starting to emerge it was the it was it was re go back and look at the tape. The DNC people, the the Bernie people at that convention, were carrying signs that we were ripped off. We were cheated. Where the fuck were you guys? See, they're lying. They're just it's the bubble. It's Rachel Maddow's bubble that anything that the people say and observe on the ground. That's what reporters used to do. They used to look and see what people on the ground said. Witnesses, but now they people like Rachel Maddow just look for the CIA to say what well what happened? Tell us. Right? They look for the quote intelligence agencies to tell them rather than look at the actual evidence on the ground. Because they're not allowed out of the cage. For someone like Rachel Maddow, she doesn't get out of the cage. She she's in Upper West Side Manhattan. She's in the bird cage, as I said in the previous video. She lives in the little bird cage. They they take it, you know, the private car picks her up and takes her to the Takes it to work in the morning. Takes it to the lesbian bar at night. They have drinks. They talk. She flies here and flies there, and 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 meets foofy people. But but it's always she's always gave, given six million dollars a year. Always always the bubble is always rather maintained. But she's going to say something startling. That's what I want to get up to. Is the the connection her her reliance on the CIA for information. No. As usual, as normal, there was this super contentious, fascinating presidential campaign going on. And that was very engrossing at the time. And it was not until after the election that the extent of the Russian involvement in our presidential election really came to light. And that started with a startling report from the Washington Post that came out the evening of Friday, December 9th. A report that kind of blew all other news right out of the water. So we had a whole show planned tonight uh, that had honestly nothing to do with this topic, but then uh, the Washington Post just dropped this astonishing bombshell uh, within the last hour. Now, I'm gonna, if you haven't seen this yet, I'm gonna put the headline up on the screen here so you can see it. I'm just gonna quote the lead directly here. Uh, the CIA has concluded in a secret assessment that Russia intervened in the 2016 election to help Donald Trump win the presidency rather than just to undermine confidence in the U.S. electoral system. Uh, they're citing officials briefed on the matter. Quote, intelligence agencies have identified individuals with connections to the Russian government who provided WikiLeaks with thousands of hacked emails from the DNC and others, including Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. This is stunning stuff, right? I mean, this is, and this is just broken within the last hour in the Washington Post. They're reporting that the CIA not only concluded that the Russians intervened in the election, stole information, publicized stolen information to help Donald Trump win the presidency, but the CIA gave its information about Russia to the leadership in the House and the Senate. And the White House wanted to make a big public bipartisan stand against it, and uh, Republicans said no. Mitch McConnell specifically said no. No, don't tell the public. And so we held the election. 
with the leadership in Congress knowing full well what Russia was doing, and we all went to vote while they sat on that. Until now, until the Post published this tonight. That was Friday night, December 9th, 2016. Breaking news from the Washington Post. The first of many Friday nights when I would have to work late. <laughs> Basically, since then, since December 9th, we have been in kind of a sustained period of very distracting, very engrossing political crisis. This has felt like a sustained political crisis. As since then, we have learned more and more and more and more about the extent of Russian involvement in the election and the investigations into the Trump campaign's contacts with Russia, both during and after the campaign. Watch the date stamps on these. No, Rachel, you watch the date stamps on these. So, so again, so the CIA, you hear her, her reliance on the, the stunning report by the CIA, right? Stunning. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's, it was like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. Uh, it, uh, Tell it, Mike. It, it, it reminds you of the, uh, uh, the glory of the American experiment. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's Can't ever get enough of that, man. Can never get enough of that shit. So, so what are we talking about here? Right? So we got this. We got this dilemma. It's right? still still plaguing American politics. Right? We want to see policy. Right? Guy like me, that's all I'm in it for. I don't care about you know. I'm not the cult of personality. I, you know, I'm not voting for no personality or supporting any personality. I support the policy. And there's one guy in there. That's Sanders. Yeah, I think he represents the the will of the people. He would be the best choice for the people. And we have, you know, we have fucking Trump who's what's best for Trump is best for Trump. You know, it's all about his, he, he didn't deliver on any any possibilities of uh, of what he was trying to do, drain the swamp, build a wall. He's going to make the economy great again. He's going to bring back jobs. He's going to he's going to give you more tax money and he did the opposite of every single Every single promise he did the opposite of. And, and not only that, that, he then goes out in front of the public and says, isn't everything great? I told you what everything would work. And, and half of the country, half of the, the robotic uh, you know, people that just can't believe they got screwed by Trump say, yeah, oh, yeah, economy's great. Look, oh, fucking hell, look how great it is. I love it, man. This guy's great, man. I fucking love Trump, man. I fucking love, he's my fucking president, man. I love fucking Trump, man. Dude, you fucking get your fucking hat on, man. We fucking Trump is, we, right? And they go on and on about how Trump is so fucking, so in their pocket. So that, that that's what it is about. And um, the, whoever, as I said, the title of this will, will be, whoever, whoever admits the Russia hacked the the Russia whoever diffuses the Russia hack myth first could win this thing, right? I think Tulsi, Tulsi Gabbard is is that could be her claim to fame if she could go dig down a little deeper and call out the fact that the Democratic Party actually rigged their own primary and actually say it in those words very clearly, using the evidence on the ground from. For example, Tim Canova in Florida and the DNC fraud lawsuit down in Florida. If you could, if you can actually lean on that evidence, the purging of the the votes here in Brooklyn, the closing and closing of polling stations in Arizona and Massachusetts, right? so many so many examples, right? The exit polling not matching. If you can lean on that, the the actual testimony from Donna Brazil that she handed the questions to Hillary Clinton from you know her job inside of the uh, inside of CNN, her access to CNN people. Right? If you can just put together the evidence, right? And the, and of course, the I could go on and on about it. The massive quid pro quo that was going on inside of the DNC. If the one candidate would come forward. Now Trump has shown signs that crazy Bernie. You know they're gonna screw him again. What what why they screwed him the last time? Trump say say what happened then? How did they screw him? They screwed him by cheating him. And why they cheated him because. Because, because they she fucking cheated him. Because he's a he he represents the people. He represents the the voice of the people. Seventy percent of the people. Now it's a one hundred percent chance that Joe Biden is not going to go there. But there is a whoever if Sanders, if Sanders can can 
come forward and unequivocally say, right, in his own voice that the Democratic Party cheated him, right, straight out says it, he, he'll be the next president of the United States because all of the smart people will then coalesce around him. But right now, you've got a lot of the, the, uh, the, the Bernie tried and true, the, the, the shut-eye Bernie lovers that are just, oh, I love Bernie. He must be right. I don't. I don't buy that on any politician. I, I certainly don't buy it. What Trump never did, and you know, Trump is ninety nine percent bullshit. And every once in a while, a little truth will squeak out. Sanders is, you know, eighty five percent. You know, he's he's more like he's more like only maybe fifteen to twenty percent bullshit. And the rest of the rest of uh, his his rhetoric is probably eighty five percent accurate. But that fifteen percent is still enough to sink you. Because it's the important 15%. The, the, the part that says that the, elect, the elections are fake right? and that they're going to screw them again. They're, going to, they're, going to, they're doing it not that way, but they'll find another way. And this way is to, the new way is to stack a lot of candidates up front, rig California. They're definitely going to rig California, the, the, the election that happens uh, on um, uh, the big Tuesday, Super Tuesday. Uh, only a month out from Iowa and New Hampshire. Uh, they're going to rig California, and they're going to steal votes away from Sanders, and that's where they'll stop him, because after that day, 40% of the vote will have been entered, and Sanders will find it impossible to get to 50% of the pledged delegates at the convention, and then they'll, they'll overturn it. Some kind of scandal will happen. Some kind of big move Big move will happen where Bernie Sanders is colluding with Russia. He was not only naked at his wedding and a bunch of a bunch of Russians drinking drinking Russian, you know, vodka, but he also said, someday I'm gonna be president and I'm gonna support Russia. <laughs> you know, some shit, crazy shit like that to stop him, and then there'll be a scandal and then they'll 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 pass it to Joe Biden or some people still fucking guy in California still saying they're gonna give it to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know about that shit. That's crazy. But someone's going to get it other than Bernie Sanders. And they're going to lose. They're going to go on and they're going to run against Trump and they're going to lose. Yeah, so that's that's all. But if Sanders, again, I, I'm going to keep pushing on this because, uh, again, my, my heart my heart feeling is is that uh, he would be best for the country. I have I have my, you know, I believe I have my finger on the pulse of both the Sanders supporters and the Trump supporters, and and, uh, and not just on this channel, but but you know widely widely believe that the the number one concern with most people is to get rid of the corruption, to end the corruption. And what better way to end the corruption than to call it out? You would stand alone, right? Again, the president, the, any candidate who 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 steps forward and and addresses the the actual corruption and debunks the Mueller report that 100% of it had nothing to do with Russia. The person that does that, the Trump is still bullshitting. He's still got that, he's still reserving his 33% bullshit. Right? He proved no collusion, no, no, no uh, obstruction, but no one has come forward and said no hack. Because right? then when you say no hack, then you've got, a, then you've got the real truth. The real truth of the matter. And whoever does it first wins. Marcus Conti reporting. Kindly become a Patreon of this channel. That's how I keep it floating. And uh, what else? And uh, don't forget to subscribe. People, the, num the subscription number is going down. That's not because people are leaving. It's because the, every time the number clicks up, it seems YouTube comes in and knocks 100 people off the roll. So just resubscribe. It, it, it's, not, it's just a number. It doesn't really matter. It's, I'm not, the message is still the same. Marcus Conte reporting.